Welcome back everybody. Today we are on the second step of the process of renovating my attic space. What you see behind me here is the attic vacuum. And what this does is just pretty much sucks up all the insulation through a tube and sticks it in the back of a truck or a vacuum bag, depending on which how the company likes to do it. I thought about doing it myself and then I, I judged the cost of how much it costs to rent the vacuum, rent the truck, rent the bags, get the garbage can out here. And then it was like a $400 difference or a $300 difference. So I was like, you know what? Let the, let the pros come out here and do the dirty work. And so they're up in the attic right now. So right here, you can hear how heavy that insulation is moving through the tube in the attic space. This is high humidity in the attic space can cause the insulation to become damp. This, is, this not only reduces the effectiveness, but it can also lead to mold and mildew growth. Moldy insulation can, call, can affect air quality and poses serious health risks. I took a small break out of the attic to show you what a uninsulated attic looks like through a thermal imaging camera. Thermal imaging cameras are a powerful tool used to detect the difference and visualize temperature variations. But let's clear up some common misconceptions. The camera does not actually see through wall. What they do is measure the infrared radiation emitted by the surface. When you use a thermal imaging camera on the wall, it shows the temperature of the wall surface, not behind it. Okay, still on day two of the insulation removal process. It's a long and dirty job, but what I'm gonna start doing here as they're cleaning out the insulation over there is I'm gonna start foaming all the penetrations. And we had someone that viewed the channel that asked how I'm going to foam the can light. So you can see here, it doesn't take much and it foams up pretty nicely all around the light. Looks pretty good right there. So that's pretty much it. We have to do that 30 plus more times. You wanna get every air register, every wall transition, anywhere wall air could be coming in from the bottom to the top. So what I'm looking at here is um, I foamed between the brick and the, and, the, and the wood here. And what I was concerned was this is a wall transition right here. And I thought I felt a little bit cooler air. So I just whipped out my, my Hick Micro and trying to determine if I have any cold air coming through. And it appears I do. So here, this is what I'm looking at here. Let's see if I can show it. You can see here all that foam is a little hot because it comes out hotter. But the wall has, um, you can see in between the boards here, there's still cold air coming into the attic space from that little transition point. So see what it looks like from this point. You can see that transition there. And I'm just gonna foam all along that base right there too. All right, we're on day four of the attic renovation and man, it ends up being a lot more work than you think it is going to be. So uh, when we were removing all the insulation, that, that newspaper insulation was a lot heavier than uh, the fiber, the fiber glass insulation. And so whenever they were pulling it out, they could only pull out little bits of it at a time because it wasn't traveling through the hose very well. And then there was just a lot of wood, a lot of debris, a lot of old wires, a lot of old plumbing. So we're having to pull all of that stuff out and a lot of it had to be done by hand, which is way more work than we thought it was gonna be, but we ended up getting majority of it. We're gonna have to come back for day three of attic uh, clean, uh, pulling, pulling uh, the insulation out, but right now we're doing the duct works and you can see how we're pulling out all the duct, the old ducts behind me, and we got all the metal out and you want this duct work to be lifted and suspended and separated in this attic, in our attic spaces. In Houston, when the ducts are touching each other, it will condensate and drop water through the insulation on the ceiling and can cause mold uh, problems within your attic space. So we're on day five, I'm out of uniform. Last time earlier in the video, I was in uniform. I just just got foam all over it. So this is gonna be kind of the uh, final cleanup slash foam uh, in the attic space where I'm gonna go and double check all the areas where they said they foamed and it's almost impossible to catch everything 
all in one swing so I'm just gonna follow up foam anything I can also there's some mechanical exhaust fans that aren't, aren't connected uh, properly so we're gonna fix that I noticed I had some leaks around the ducts and we're gonna seal that up and tape it up a little bit better to help uh, the airflow Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm getting pretty exhausted. Um, the heat's really getting to me. Um, I was able to knock out the mechanical exhaust fence and I knocked out all the duct work. The duct work took a lot longer than I thought. The, we did replace all the old metal duct work uh, two days ago, but I did not really inspect the old flex duct that was in place too well. And it was leaking a lot, a lot more than I thought. So it took me a lot longer to tape that up than I thought and uh, seal it up. Okay, I lied about the, the metal duct work. I had a miscommunication between the HVAC company and me, myself, what ducts needed to be replaced. So I crawled around the back of the attic and I discovered more duct work, tried to get them to call for them to come back out. And there was this huge argument. Whatever, I'm gonna figure out how to do it myself. So a few YouTube videos in, I learned it. It's pretty easy. It's self-explanatory. Nothing special. If you know, if you have two hands and a brain, you can figure out how to hang duct work. There's a few mistakes that I did that I would love to share with you. Uh, metal duct work is not easy. You do need some sort of saw to go through it. Uh, first saw through, I did not have any eye protection or gloves, so <laughs> went back down, and got eye protection and gloves. Also. Um, I cut through a wire too, so you want to make sure you're paying attention to where you're cutting. It's just really hard in this tight space and I had wires everywhere. Three, I definitely would recommend a mask. I don't do this every day, but I didn't wear a mask and I definitely felt it the next day. So took a, a total of maybe two to three hours to do all of this by myself. I got nicks and cuts everywhere, so maybe a long sleeve shirt would be a good idea too. Uh, it was not fun but I was able to knock it out and it added one extra day onto the project. You don't need much to complete this task. You just need a few transitions, tape, some straps, scissors, a knife, some wire cutters so you can cut in through the metal part of the ducts and that's it. The rest is just time, hard work and sweat. Definitely easy to knock out if you're trying to save money on a project. The HVAC company, just to hang the ducts they put in place, was it was $4,000. This amount of material that you see in front of me was 300 bucks. And that was, it was only one run, but I probably could have done five, six runs. So I bet it would have cost me about maybe $1,500 of supplies to do on my own duct. But that would also add on two to three days of work myself. And whenever you're paying the $4,000, you do have to remember these guys are professionals. They do it every day and they'll knock it out in a few hours. With someone that doesn't know what they're doing, it could take you a few days. So just remember, you do get what you pay for. Earlier in the video, I showed you what an uninsulated attic looks like. This is what an insulated attic looks like. So these red marks that you see over here in the corner, that's where we installed the baffles to allow the attic to breathe. So you don't want insulation there. You want air coming from the outside, coming in from the soft vent, heading up to the ridge. So you want a consistent temperature all the way across, which we are getting. No real anomalies in the infrared camera and yeah, looking good. So right here, the last step I need to do is obviously insulate the attic door, but you can see how clean this looks. Really nice, you got good airflow out of the register. We got a few spots, but that's where the decking is and it was kind of hard to get to. You're not gonna lose a whole lot of energy loss in these locations. Really good, looks nice. All in all, I'm really happy how this project turned out. You know, we really, I went from having a unsealed attic space to having every penetration that I could possibly get to sealed up and also old moldy insulation to brand new fiberglass. It did take twice as long as I thought it would, which most projects do, right? The crew, the insulation crew was fantastic to work through. They had no problem rescheduling and moving things around. So I'll drop their contact link below this video. So if you need a reasonably priced 
installation job, removal and add-on, uh, definitely uh, give them a call. Uh, really great to work with. I will not know the effects of the energy bill for about another month. I'll add that on down the line on one of my other videos in the future because the doors were open for a very long period of time and we are running the AC with no insulation in our attic all month. So it'll probably take about another 30 days or so before we know the full effect. So I really hope you like this video. I did my best to record everything. It's re it was really hard because of the attic heat and the angles of the cameras. If you do like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye. Spotlight, here I am, shining bright like a diamond in the glam.